Welcome back to another video. My name's Amber and I upload beauty and true crime content. If they're the type of videos that you like to watch, then why not hit that subscribe button and come along and join our little family link. And if you're already part of the family, then make sure that notification bell switch on just so you're notified of whenever I upload a video. Why not give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. And if you feel like it, why not head on over to Instagram where I post all of my latest makeup looks. And now we can get in to today's true crime Tuesday. And today's case is about the redhead murders. The redhead murders refer to a series of murders that took place in the United States and they were murders of red-headed females. These murders took place between October 1978 and 1992 and they're believed to have been committed by an unknown male serial killer. The murders have occurred in a number of states including Tennessee, Arkansas, Kentucky, Mississippi, Pennsylvania and West Virginia. The victims, which many of them remained unidentified for a lot of years, usually were women with reddish hair whose bodies were found abandoned along major highways in the United States. Officers believe that the women were likely hitchhiking or may have been involved in prostitution. And they are still unsure whether these murders have been committed by one perpetrator or many. And they're not 100% sure on how many more victims that there have been. In comparison to what has actually been reported, there could have been more, but they just haven't been linked to the redhead murders as of yet. It is believed that there have been a total of 6 to 11 victims. Many of the victims have never been identified due to an inability to find family to verify their identities. Due to the locations of the victims' bodies, many speculated that the murderer could have been a truck driver because it took these murders took place over such a wide variation of states, so it would make sense that it would be someone who was constantly travelling. So on February 13th of 1983, a naked body of a white female was found on Route 250 near Littleton in Wetzel County, West Virginia. A pair of senior citizens actually reported the body because they thought it was a display mannequin, but when they got closer, they realised that it wasn't. It was a dead body. The body had been recently dumped in the area as there was snow on the ground, but not on the body. Tire tracks and footprints at the scene indicated that it was likely that the victim had been transported to the area after her death and an examination of the body concluded that she had died two days earlier and she was not thought to have been a victim of sexual assault, although it was apparent that foul play had played a part in her death. Her cause of death, though, was undetermined, although police did speculate that it could have been due to asphyxiation or strangulation. This has never been officially determined. Her hair was auburn and by 1985, she was linked as a suspected victim of the redhead murders. She was estimated to be between 35 and 45 and she was actually a little bit older than the medium of other women who had been grouped as victims for the redhead murders. Her height was esp estimated to be 5 foot 6 and she weighed around 135 pounds. Her eyes were presumed to be brown although post-mortem changes may have affected her eye colour. She had two scars, one typical of a cesarean section and another one on her index finger. Her legs and underarms were shaving which in this attention to grooming was not characteristic of a transient or a hitchhiker. Authorities also checked dentures records in Ohio, Pennsylvania in West Virginia but had no avail. They had checked several theories including that she may have had ties to a Hare Krishna community in New Virginia, West Virginia or that she was possibly a, a prostitute from the Pittsburgh area and there was also a suggestion that she'd been seen by a bar employee at a bar in Wheeling, West Virginia. Authorities had at least two possible suspects. One was a stocky white male in his 40s who was roughly 5 foot 10 and was around 185 to 200 pounds who was seen near the area and had driven a 1978 or 1982 tone brown Chevrolet pickup with a possibly lighter coloured camper on top, which witnesses are described as seeing. However, this man has never been identified. The other suspect is a man in prison for multiple murders without possibility of parole, but the police cannot prosecute him because the victim's identity remains unknown. To this day, this victim actually remains as unidentified and it is highly speculated whether or not she was actually a victim of the redhead murders. Local detectives strongly suggest that she wasn't, but there are a lot of people who do believe that she she was. On September 16th of 1984, the body of a woman later identified as 28 year old Lisa Nichols, who also used the last name Jarvis, was found along Interstate 40 near West Memphis, Arkansas. She was only wearing a sweater. She was a resident of West Virginia and it took 
investigators months to identify Lisa and inform her family of what had happened, which suggested she was possibly estranged from them. Lisa was not identified until nine months later in June 1985 through using fingerprint technology. Lisa was believed to have been a victim of the redhead murders. She shared common characteristics to fit the profile of these murders. She had reddish strawberry blonde hair. She was found dumped along a highway. Lisa was identified by a couple from Florida who she'd stayed with for a period of time and it is speculated that she may have been murdered after leaving a truck stop along the highway and may have been attempting to hitchhike. On January 1st, 1985, the bound body of a woman was discovered near Jellicoe, Tennessee, in Campbell County, down an embankment of the southbound side of Interstate 75. The remains were in an advanced state of decomposition. An examination of the body uncovered she had been murdered approximately 72 hours before. The victim was killed by strangulation. She was Caucasian and had shoulder length of curly red hair. Her age was estimated to be between 17 and 25, but she could have possibly been as old as 30. The the victim was found clothed in a tan pullover, a t-shirt and jeans. Additionally, she'd been wrapped in a blanket which was later found to have seminal fluid on it. Her eyes were green. The young woman had freckles all over her body and various scars, including a burn mark on one arm. She was 10 to 12 weeks pregnant when she died. She had a partial upper denture holding two false teeth. It is believed that she was between 5 foot 1 and 5 foot 4 and she weighed approximately 110 to 115 pounds. On September 6th, 2018, the Shelby County Sheriff's Office announced that the victim had been identified as Tina Marie McCarney Farmer. She was 21 or 22 at the time of her death and she was last seen in Indianapolis in Indiana accompanied by a trucker who was said to be headed to Kentucky. Tina had one daughter prior to disappearing in 1984 who sadly passed away in 2017. She was reported missing by her family at the time as she was last seen by them at Thanksgiving dinner in 1984 yet authorities in Indiana did not enter her into the national database. The state did not have a law common to many other states requiring law enforcement to enter unidentified victims into the database that like that law needs to be changed like that could help solve so many missing person cases and so many cases do you know like it just doesn't make any sense for the for it not to be a law in every state that they should be entered into the national database to me it just doesn't make any sense so in 2019 dna evidence identified convicted kidnapper jerry leon johns as the man who killed tina jerry died in prison in 2015 he was he was previously convicted in 1987 of aggravated assault kidnapping and other crimes involving a woman known as Linda Schnack. He picked her up in Knox County, Tennessee, two months after Tina's disappearance and death. Linda survived the attack, however, after she was bound, strangled and dumped along Interstate 40. Her testimony assisted in putting Jerry behind bars. Like Tina, Linda had been choked with a piece of cloth ripped from a t-shirt, bound and left for dead inside a storm drain under Interstate 40. Linda also had red hair, which was common with the red-headed murder victims. And on December 18th, 2019, a grand jury in Campbell County, Tennessee, ruled that Jerry would be indicted for murder in Tina's death if he was still alive, but unfortunately he'd already passed away at this point. So, so a Dorsetto County door was a woman who was found murdered on January 24th, 1985 in Olive Branch, Mississippi. The victim was found by a truck driver driving southbound on the US Highway 78, 100 feet east from the Coldwater River, and her body was found at around 7.30 a.m. She was 20 feet south of the highway, and her shoes, undergarments, and jacket were missing. She was strangled with a ligature and possibly sexually assaulted. She had a freckled complexion, wavy short to medium length, strawberry blonde to red hair, hence why she thought to be a victim of the redhead murders. She had scars on her left hand, on her arm, and her fingers. She she also had green eyes and she had poor dental hygiene. It's debated between her having green and brown eyes but she did have poor dental hygiene and she is now buried at Blocker Cemetery in Olive Branch and remains unidentified although 16 women have been ruled out as her. So on March 31st of 1985 the skeletonized body of a red-haired female was found in Pleasant View, Chettenham County, Tennessee. It was estimated that she died three to five months previous to being found and her cause of death remains unknown. Although her case is possibly linked to the red-haired murders because her body was found at the side of Interstate 24 between mile markers 29 and 30 but unlike some of the other victims she was wearing clothing she had a shirt a sweater pants and underwear she was 
wide between five feet and five foot two her weight could not be determined an examination of her teeth showed that she had some evidence of overcrowding and overlapping in her mouth and the woman was believed to be between 31 to 40 at the time of her death so she was also older than some of the other victims so on april 1st of 1985 the body of a woman was found in a large white admiral refrigerator in grey knox county kentucky alongside route 25 her cause of death was suffocation she had died a few days before being discovered she was found nude except for two distinctive necklace pendants one of a heart and the other of a gold colored eagle there were two pairs of socks one white and the other white with green and yellow stripes there were reports that the victim may have been soliciting a ride to northern carolina over cb radio 500 people attended the jane doe's victim's funeral which was televised the case was a local sensation in gray as the town was a quiet and sleepy place where little out of the ordinary usually happened the refrigerator had a decal of the word superwoman on the front and distinguishing features on her body included a number of moles on the right side of her neck near one ankle and below each breast she had a yellow stained upper incisor and a scar mark and other marks on her abdomen indicating that she had born a child her eyes were light brown and her hair was red which fit the pattern of the redhead murders after the autopsy she was determined to be between 24 and 35 she was between 4 foot 9 and 4 foot 11 and it was also possible that there were there was a pair of boots that was found near the refrigerator it's possible that these were owned by her so on october 1st of 2018 the knox county sheriff office announced this woman had been positively identified as epsi regima black pilgrim of western north carolina a dna match was made between her and her grown daughter who who said her mother disappeared when she was just six weeks old that's so sad and epsi also had four other older children it's just like it's just awful that their mother's been ripped away from them on april 3rd of 1985 the skeletalized partial remains of a young girl were discovered about 200 yards off the big wheel gap road four miles southwest of jellicoe tennessee in campbell county near a strip mine she was believed to have been dead between one to four years and she was aged to be between nine to fifteen she has become known as baby girl to investigators on the case because honestly this girl's got such a gorgeous she's got such a baby face so that's why they ended up nicknaming her baby girl the remains were located in a garbage dumping area near an abandoned shaft mine only a partial amount of remains were found as they had been scattered by animals down the slope of the hill investigators believe the individual or individuals responsible for disposing her body were likely familiar to the area as the road she was left near would be difficult to come across by chance the cause of death was undetermined which did not rule out homicide or foul play and only 32 bones including her skull were recovered from the skit scene her skull was complete enough to permit a facial reconstruction attempt and a necklace and bracelet made from plastic buttons were found nearby as well as a pair of size five boots and a few scraps of clothing her hair and eye color are unknown her age range is below the medium for the other victims but the circumstances of her death suggest that she might be connected to them the knot in the cloth found in a piece of material found tied around the neck of the campbell county victim was very similar to a knot in a piece of material found around linda schnack's neck and recent forensic analysis of the victim's remains indicated that she was not native to the area where she was discovered the test showed she was likely born in florida or central texas and had later lived in the midwest rocky mountain states the southwest or the pacific coast so on april 14th of 1985 the body of a young white female was found in greenville green county tennessee it was determined she had been murdered between three to six weeks earlier possibly by severe blunt force trauma and there was also a stab wound her body was in an advanced state of decomposition police were able to however obtain fingerprints as well as dna and dental information she had been approximately six to eight weeks pregnant but had miscarried before she died she was estimated to be between 14 to 20 years old but she could have possibly been as old as 25 she was approximately five foot four to five foot six inches tall and she weighed between 130 to 140 pounds she had a slight overbite and had some fillings in her teeth showing that she had a dental care in her life her fingernails were painted pink with pink polish and she had light brown to blonde hair with red highlights this was why she was thought to be a possible victim of the redhead murders and in april 1985 investigators tried to identify her body using fingerprints but they were unsuccessful six missing women were ruled out as the possible identities of this victim 
victim. She was not identified until November of 2018 when officials announced that the victim was New Hampshire native Elizabeth Lamotte. She was 17 at the time of her death. Elizabeth had disappeared on April 6, 1984. She was identified through a DNA match after a DNA a profile was provided by her family to the New Hampshire police in 2017. She'd been staying at a group home in Manchester, New Hampshire and had never returned to her family after furlough. Her family was initially asked for a DNA profile to compare to the adult woman victim of the Bearbrook murders. An unidentified girlfriend of the suspect who went by the alias Robert, Robert Evans was known by the same first name as Elizabeth. Robert Evans was later revealed to be serial killer Terry Peter Rasmussen. It is possible that the rise and fawn Jane Doe located in 1988 in Georgia may have been a victim of the redhead murder according to amateur sleuths online. This victim was sexually assaulted and had been strangled to death. She was between 16 to 25 years old but she did have red hair like other victims and she was found near Interstate 59. Priscilla Brelvins was located in North Carolina alongside Interstate 40 in March 8 1985, 10 years after she disappeared from her home in Charlotte. Her remains were identified in 2012, but her cause of death has never been established. However, it is believed that she died in July 1975 at the time of her disappearance and that her body was dumped at the side of I-40 soon after her death, where it remained until the discovery. The Pulaski County Jane Doe was also found in 1985 alongside a road. She had auburn hair but was not located along a highway. Her cause of death is not known and she died sometime earlier as her body was reduced to bones. It's believed that most of the victims remain unidentified due to being estranged or not close to existing family members. They also may not have been native to the states in which they were found. In 1985, not long after the Greene County victim was found, the states of Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Arkansas, Mississippi requested the Federal Bureau of Investigation for assistance with cases. There were inconsistencies among some of the victims and characteristics of the crime scenes. Some were found with or without clothing, some had had sexual encounters, encounters before the murders and some hadn't. A possible suspect for the murders did emerge in 1985 and this was trucker 37 year old Jerry John Jones who we were discussing earlier. It's very interesting because it's never been announced whether he's suspected to be a suspect in the redhead murders or not but with it being an open investigation that's probably why and it's also probably going to be difficult because they can't prosecute him because obviously he has passed away. Another suspect was a 32 year old trucker from Pennsylvania who was questioned after kidnapping and raping a woman in the state of Indiana. He managed to escape before more inquiry. The suspect was also dismissed from this investigation after being questioned by the Tennessee police. In 2018 students enrolled in a sociology class at Elizabethan High School studied the case with the aid of their prosecutor. The class coined the name the Bible Belt Strike. The class developed the information from a FBI profiler. They described the subject as being a white male born between 1936 and 1962. So they were likely aged between 23 and 39 in 1985, around when the murders took place. And they were likely a commercial trucker who frequented Interstate 40. And they suggested that he be between the height of 5 foot 9 and 6 foot 2. And he weighed around 180 to 270 pounds. His work was likely based in or near the city of Knoxville, Tennessee. Wow. <laughs> Wow, that is a lot, a lot, a lot of information to talk, discuss and go through in a case. Let me give you my thoughts and feelings on this one. Okay, I definitely think there is a serial killer. I definitely think it could possibly be a trucker. It could possibly even be Jerry John Jones. I think he could be possibly the one that has done this. It just seems to fit his MO, like how he murdered Tina and Linda's very, very similar to fit the MO of who would be classed as someone that would be a victim of redhead murders. I find it very, very interesting. Even possibly be someone who either lost their job or got incarcerated, because why did they stop killing? That's what I find so interesting. They got away with loads and loads of murders, and murderers strive off these sort of things. Why did they stop killing people? It just doesn't make sense. Now, I do believe some of the unidentified cases could be linked to this redhead murderer but i do think some of them are a little bit inconsistent but it's just interesting do you think there was a serial killer or do you think these are completely independent cases that just seem to link it's not like these redhead murders were like on one completely opposite end of the country they were they all took place in a very similar area across the same like sort of interstates 
it seems likely to me and um, i just think this is such an interesting mind-boggling case and if you've got any theories or anything i'd love to know them down below let me know your thoughts and feelings on this case in the comments section and i shall see you in the next one Mwah, thanks so much for watching